Welcome to Sinister Heroes. I'm your host, Danny Iniquitous. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, this is a channel about Dungeons and Dragons where we discuss subclasses and try to take a darker tone with all of the subject matter. If you like what we do here, please like, share, and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear your builds, your ideas, and some of the great things you got to do with these incredible characters. Without any further preamble, let's jump right into the video. The Echo Knight Fighter. The Echo Knight comes to us from the Explorer's Guide to Wildmount, which is an official D&D book. It comes to us from the people that make Critical Role, particularly Campaign 2. If you love Critical Role, this is a book that's going to hit near and dear to you. There's a lot of great concepts here and a lot of the great feel of the world that they built in Critical Role. So if you like that kind of content, this is really for you. There's a couple of really cool things they did in this book. And since it's official material, we're going to cover this class, which I think is a very, very great subclass for the fighter. I love the themology behind it. A couple of things that we're going to take a little bit of artistic direction with, but I think it really works very well. Some people have claimed this to be the very best fighter subclass, and we're going to see exactly how it holds up. At third level, you gain access to Manifest Echo. You can use a bonus action to magically manifest an echo of yourself in an unoccupied space you can see within 15 feet of you. This echo is magical, translucent, gray image of you that lasts until it is destroyed, until you dismiss it as a bonus action, or until you manifest another echo or you become incapacitated. Your Echo has an AC of 14 plus your proficiency bonus, one hit point, and immunity to all conditions. If it has to make a saving throw, it uses your saving throw bonus for the roll. It is the same size as you and it occupies its space. On your turn, you can mentally command the Echo to move up to 30 feet in any direction, no action required. If your Echo is ever more than 30 feet from you at the end of your turn, it is destroyed. As a bonus action, you can teleport, magically swapping places with your Echo at a cost of 15 feet of your movement, regardless of the distance between the two of you. When you take the attack action on your turn, any attack you make with that action can originate from your space or the Echo's space. You can make this choice for each attack. When a creature that you can see within 5 feet of your Echo moves at least 5 feet away from it, you can use your reaction to make an opportunity attack against that creature as if you were in the Echo's place. Manifest Echo is your signature ability. I think there's a couple of things about this that really fly underneath the radar. First and foremost is that it occupies its own space. The reason why this is important is say you're in a hallway that only fits one person and you see someone going after your wizard or something like that. Throwing this Echo in their way means that they have to destroy the Echo before they can move through it because it occupies its own space. It's a great way to circumvent things that are going in a straight line towards someone because now they have to maneuver around it and spend that movement to do so. It's not super important, but tactfully it is something that you should keep in mind. Also, the fact that it only gets destroyed if it's more than 30 feet away from you at the end of your turn means you can start combat and set your echo up 30 feet away while you're on a complete opposite side of whatever kind of map you're using and then swap places with it after you make it move an additional 30 feet yeah it'll get destroyed but it costs you no resources so you can bring it back the next round anyway just make sure to do it first and you're pretty covered but that gives you an incredible amount of movement because you can move 45 feet or maybe even more, something close to like 75 feet without having to take a dash or anything like that because you would have moved at 30, which would have been 60 feet from where you are, took 15 movement, and then left yourself with 15 movement after that. Huge as far as movement and movability is concerned. You can do a lot of things, especially if you have to kite someone or run away and heal up or take less damage or switch to something else. I love the idea that this fighter never needs a, melee, a ranged weapon and it can survive basically on melee because everything you can do is a melee attack. I think that's great. I think that's really exciting. I love the idea of being 30 feet away from something and taunting it, 
mocking it and doing all these melee attacks from your echo that's standing right beside it. It's a very cool concept to me and it helps me build this really dramatically like rude and loud and like charismatic, almost bardish in an evil way kind of a character because you can do things and you can really mock your enemy and bring them down, which is great in case they ever survive because now they really hate you. Uh, one of the things about this ability that I think is worth maybe getting your DM to flavor text and change a little bit up is that the echo has to look like you. What if it doesn't? What if this echo is a manifestation as to who your character is? Maybe you're a hexblood and your magic has caused your body to be so evil and vile and tinged with this dark fey energy that the skin just starts to be like gross and it looks more hideous than you do. And it's like just crawls around with extended arms, almost like a evil visage transferred into a different plane and it revealed its true self. Or what if your character had this insane notion that they always had like a sibling, but they heard them in their mind and they never really actually existed. And this echo is that personified and they can see that. And then the echo can give them commands and almost work backwards in what you would normally do. And it creates this great opportunity to really layer in some of the great things about your character and build this subtext on being something that isn't necessarily just the person controlling the echo, but the echo matters so much because it could be or is controlling the caster. Also at third level, you gain access to unleash incarnation. You can heighten your echo's fury. Whenever you take the attack action, you can make one additional melee attack from the echo's position. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your constitution modifier, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This is a cool ability. When you get this at third level, you gain only an additional attack X amount of times per your constitution modifier, which doesn't seem like much when you step back and look at it. But at third level, being able to attack twice in one round is a very big boom. Yes, you can use it only X amount of times, but your constitution modifier will grow as it is very important. Considering as an Echo Knight, you only need your attack modifier and your constitution. Everything else kind of really falls way, way below that. You don't need wisdom, charisma, or intelligence for this particular subclass, so you're not as multi-ability score dependent. Meaning, having the HP, having the constitution modifier, is very good for you. At 7th level, you gain access to Echo Avatar. You can temporarily transfer your consciousness to your Echo. As an action, you can see through your Echo's eyes and hear through its ears. During this time, you are deafened and blinded. You can sustain this effect for up to 10 minutes, and you can end it at any time. It requires no action. While your echo is being used in this way, it can be up to a thousand feet away from you without being destroyed. Meaning you can take your echo and it is no longer just a combat ability. It can now be used for adventuring. You're going to try and spring a trap. Worried enemies are around the corner. You can have your echo walk by and punch the ground or the walls and try and trigger those traps. It gives a new weight to your echo. It gives your echo a purpose beyond just being something to punch really hard with and become something that saves you. It can be a thousand feet away from you. And I see no reason why you can't swap positions with it. It's an interesting concept. Now you can sit in a prison and just wait and try and sneak your way down the scaffolding on the side or something of the building and swap your way to freedom. Very interesting. At 10th level, you gain access to Shadow Martyr. You make your echo throw itself in front of an attack directed at another creature that you can see. Before the attack roll is made, you can use your reaction to teleport the echo to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of the targeted creature. The attack roll that triggered the reaction is instead made against your echo. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you finish a short or long rest. 
Here's what's important. You have to use this ability before you know if the attack roll hits or if it misses. Shadow Martyr plays on the idea that you can use your echo freely. It really wants you to believe that you can use this Shadow Martyr ability often, and you can't. You have to wait for a short or long rest to gain this ability back. It can save you. If there's a spell attack roll going in your direction or going in the direction of someone that maybe is concentrating on a very important spell, this is why you do that. Even if the attack is going to miss, it also might miss your echo. It's important to use this freely. As a fighter, you have the defenses and the HP necessary to absorb a certain amount of attacks, so using this on yourself really isn't going to be optimal most of the time. Be a leader here and try and save someone and try and play that as an important action. Try and make it mean something because if you kept pace with what your character was and what this echo means to your character, throwing it into damage should still mean something to you and who you decide to use it on and why you decide to use it should also matter. And that creates this great bond with your character and with your other party members because you're choosing the side with them. At 15th level, you gain access to Reclaim Potential. You've learned to absorb the fleeting magic of your echo. When an echo of yours is destroyed by taking damage, you can gain a number of temporary hit points equal 2d6, plus your constitution modifier, provided you don't already have temporary hit points. You can use this feature of number of times equal to your constitution modifier, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. This works very well for you because you should have been bumping up your constitution, as it is really important as a fighter, specifically for an Echo Knight. This is a great way to make your HP go a little further. Yes, 2d6 plus say you have 5 in your con modifier at this point. At best, is gonna be 17 HP. And you're thinking at 15th level, this isn't that big of a deal. At this point, that is more of a minus to the damage you receive. And that's how you should consider it. In a big fight, and your echoes are being destroyed regularly... This is a great way to keep making yourself last a little longer, getting a little bit more durability out of your base HP. Because instead of taking 25 damage, you took maybe 10. You know, like there's possibilities for you to survive things you definitely shouldn't because you used this from the start of the fight, as opposed to saving it to the very, very end. Be smart about this ability and try and get the most of it when you're at the middle of your HP and not at the end of your HP. That'll make your hit points last longer, and it'll really effectively build this buffer and kind of teach you a great way to mitigate damage as opposed to trying to save your life with just a few temp HP. At 18th level, you gain access to Legion of One. You can use your bonus action to create two echoes with your manifest echo feature, and these echoes can coexist. If you try to create a third echo, the previous two are destroyed. Anything you can do from one Echo's position, you can do from the other's instead. In addition, when you roll initiative and have no use of your Unleash Incarnation feature left, you regain one use of that feature. This is a great thing, because now you can get that extra attack from any fight you have. So you don't have to worry about not being able to use it, or maybe holding onto it a little too tightly, or if you need to do more or where you are in combat, so that way you can mitigate how often you should be using that. Being able to drop two Echoes is great, because again, they do have AC, they have one hit point, and they can be attacked from. Some enemies will throw attacks at them. Some reasoning you have to jump in two different directions. Maybe you're grappled, and you need to swap positions with one of them. Now you have two options as to where you want to go. 
And it's an interesting concept when you think about that. Because once you hit 18th level, combat is a whole new monster. You have to worry about multi-attack. You have to worry about things that attack and grapple. And it's important for you to have options. This gives you an additional way to use your Echo. Now you can swarm them. You can swarm one person with three of you just around them. But you can do damage from these. A lesser intelligent being will want to attack them. And gaining an extra use of Unleash Incarnation is beneficial to you. Our final thoughts on the Echo Knight. It is a very cool subclass because you can do great things. You can make a duelist kind of a fighter where you use a, uh, a rapier and you stand off with a buckler and you just taunt and use your echo to deal damage and you really mitigate what you do and stay ranged while also only attacking in melee. It's a great way to really profoundly influence a fighter and give them a cool backstory. You can work with this echo and have it be something great and meaningful to you. I love the idea of being an insane character or being an evil or character and have that manifest. Like maybe the first time you use this, it is unsettling to some of your party members or some NPCs that might see you do it. And it gives you a wide variety of how to act. You're a trained fighter. Combat is an art to you. It's something special. It's something that defines you and entices you. And now you have this ability that very few people ever see. How does that impact you? Do you get cocky? Do you get ambitious? Do you believe your own gravitas and make yourself this narcissistic character? Or does it humble you? Or is it really that projection of your loved one? that protects you when it's shattered? Or is it just something wasteful, something you've hated, some part of you that you detest? Like if you're a half something, you're half or you're half elf or whatever mixture in between anything that you might be, maybe you hate that other half. Maybe this projection is that other half. And so you torment it and you force it to do things because it is beneath you. You are of noble blood compared to this abomination, and you never do your own attacking because you are too good, too clean, too important to sully your hands in such a way. And that's who your character is. And consider what that means. Because you always have this ability. You never get dirty. Like, like think of what kind of a fighter doesn't even do that, that considers themselves so great and beyond they won't even go up to attack what they're attacking. That gives you such variety. And it's so lucrative in building a character. And there's not many fighter subclasses that gives that to you. And that really draws me to this kind of a subclass. Yeah, you're a fighter. You pick up dueling, which is my favorite fighting style because I personally think it's the best. And you're dealing that damage that really, really grows. Does the magic weapon constitute going through an echo? Work through your DM. I can't find a reason why not because you're using magic to transfer it through. It works in my mind, and if it doesn't, then you could build your character differently. But understand what you can do, and that's exciting. You can send it and be blind and deafened and have to move through it and interact and explore, and you're not just a one trick pony. I love that about this subclass. It gives you variety, it gives you options, and the more creative you are, the bigger the opportunities you have with this subclass. That being said, we're gonna bring this video to a close. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking through. We'd love to hear from you. Please like, share, and comment. We love to hear what you guys have done. I'd love to hear your stories about your Echo Knights and what cool things you've done with them. And most importantly, thanks for giving a spooky kid a chance.